Uh, I'll call the meeting to order since we now have microphones. Uh, if you will, stand for the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we hope that you give us some guidance and patience through this budget process. We ask that you be with the people that have been involved with the floods and Hope that their property and their families are all well. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Join, join with me in the pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you will. The only item on our business meeting this morning is discuss, approve, or disapprove amendment to the commercial electricity service agreement for 111 North Brown Building, Brown Street Building giving authorization to Judge Walter R. Long, Jr. to sign, authored by Luana Kasprick. Luana, you want to explain to us what this is and what we need to do and what we're committing ourselves to? At the last meeting, the court authorized turning all the utilities on at that building. Our electricity provider is through a contract with Direct Energy through the bid with Texas Association of School Boards or TASB. This is just authorizing adding that meter to our account to provide service. It was not included before? No, sir, because we did not own it and therefore we did not have it with electricity. The building we did not own. Correct. Not that we did not own. Correct. The right to use electricity or and our current contract goes through May of 2017. Will this, this contract be including it until along with the same time period? Correct. It adds it to our existing contract. And is that all there is to? That's it. Your signature, I fax it off, they sign it, and send it back, and we file it. I'll make a motion we accept this as written. Second. Uh, is there discussion on the motion? There's been a motion and a second to accept this as it as it uh, is presented at this meeting. Uh, any comment from any of the court? No questions. All right. All in favor of the motion, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. All voted for. Motion carried. Uh, that's the only action item in the, for the meeting today. And so we would have to close the meeting with that, uh, with that action. And we will then convene into a budget workshop meeting. One item, actually it's it's more than one item, but it's a, it's discussed the departmental budget proposals and we will be discussing, as far as I'm aware of, five uh, budget uh, departments. Uh, and they are the auditor, the emergency management, treasurer, library, and the sheriff's office. We'll start, uh, and of course there won't be any action taken on any of this, this is a workshop. So with that said, uh, the budget workshop is convened and uh, we'll discuss the departmental budget proposal starting with the auditor's office. given each of y'all a notebook of uh, copies of all the requests that have been received. 
These are just departmental requests. I'm still acting the county judge and veteran service officers. After we get through all of these through the rest of this month, then we will go into the generalized budgets, non-departmental, capital outlay, things such as that. But these are going to be presentations by each department to support their requests that they provided in writing. I put myself at the top of the list because I figured I'd take the hits first. <laughs> uh, in my request, you will notice that I have increased office expense by $250. That's due to the added reports that must be generated, copy paper, toner ink, etc. cetera. Uh, my cell phone allowance remains at the same rate. It's on page 15, I'm sorry. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. okay. okay. I already got it. What are the pages number? They are in handwriting at the very bottom. Well, some are and some are. Well, the lead page for a department is they may have supporting information that. Yeah, you're in JP4 right now. I see. There it is. Okay, telephone expense will remain the same. Uh, the cell phone I am reducing to $780. This current year it's at $1,200 based on the actual charges that can be reduced. Mileage is remaining the same. Conference I am reducing by requesting a reduction of $500 rather than $4,000 annual. Uh, some of the conferences locations have changed so they won't involve the travel mileage so that's a reduction. The bond remains the same. The association dues remain the same. Furnishings, I requested $500. Uh, we have had some issues with the guest chairs in all three of my offices. So I'm proposing to replace mine with mine to the first assistant, the first assistants to the second assistants, as well as acquiring a new guest chair for myself. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all are aware that Gina Curry, my second assistant, has resigned. Her husband was a warden at TDCJ in Beeville, and he is retiring. So they are moving back to East Texas. Her last day is the third. Uh, I'm in the process of interviewing for that replacement. It has been recommended by the mediator that has been meeting with by and myself that I should request an additional staff member. I have not had the opportunity to discuss that with the district judges yet, but that is a possibility that that might be an addition. When will you know? Uh, I think we have a juvenile board meeting next Thursday where they both should be present, so I'm hoping to be able to talk to them after that. If you, if you got another person, where would you give an idea where you might put it? Well, that's going to be a whole scenario within our building. We'll have to do some adjustments, possibly reallocate some space or something like that. But I didn't figure we needed to cross that bridge yet until we knew that there was going to be an additional body. I think you mentioned that they might be available or that they might uh, come around. Is this something you need? I mean, if you need another person? It would be beneficial. You've been in my office. <laughs> beneficial because of the lack of Space or the workload. Uh, we, the auditor's office tends to be the catch-all for everything within the county. I'm the uh, Lucy of Charlie Brown. <laughs> this, this is not a poke at you because I probably ask the same thing of all of the departments. That uh, do you have an absenteeism problem with any of your help? Are they, are they consistently there? Gina has been excellent. Uh, Michelle has been with the county. She's in her 21st year. Uh, okay. Yeah. So everybody's course, working. With so. this changeover, yeah, we'll you know we'll probably 
have some extra time that's going to have to be devoted with training and that kind of stuff. If you will, you, you went over before my brain engaged the the items in your budget uh, that were changing. If you'll go over those again. Okay, office expense currently is twenty five hundred. I requested an increase to two thousand seven hundred and fifty. Cell phone is a reduction. Current budget has twelve hundred, and based on the billings, I've reduced that to seven hundred and eighty. Conference expense I reduced from four thousand to thirty five hundred, and then I have the addition of five hundred for furnishings for the new chairs. The overall requested budget is a reduction of one hundred and seventy dollars, not counting salary and fringe. Just operating expenses. Let me ask you about cell phone to increase you. Uh, would you be asking us to decrease all employees' cell phone? Uh, only certain employees have county provided cell phones. Others have twelve hundred dollars rolled into their cell phone to compensate for that. Right. Again, not a poke at you, a poke at everybody, but I realize these um, offices have, <clears throat> excuse me, their associations have built up these continuing education units that everybody has to have. That's a full employment act for bureaucrats. But anyway, um, I, I, I personally have concerns about the amount of money that the county is spending in little pieces on all of these conferences, the, the places, the entities that schedule them seem to schedule them at the most expensive hotels they can. And I know because they get the meeting room free if they block so many rooms and this, that, and the other. But um, and I glanced at yours and then I just flipped to the next one, which happens to be Mrs. Malone's, and she's got 3000 I saw in one instance $3,000 worth of conference expense. And I, I guess these things are necessary. And I, this, this isn't a poke at your department, it's a poke at the program in general. It looks like it's become a little black hole for money uh, in terms of I've got to go, so, and, and I'm not uh, faulting anyone for charging their mileage or the, <coughs> excuse me, the things like that that go along with it. I guess I'm asking for any thought anybody has on a way of possibly reducing it a little bit. Because if we take three thousand or thirty-five hundred dollars across all of the employees, it becomes a pretty fair piece of change by the time we get finished. Oh, one thing for all the officials, we are mandated by statute for continuing education, so many hours per every term. Uh, when these conferences are booked, the associations negotiate with the hotels, and we pay the state rate. It's not the off-the-block rate. So it is at reduced rates, and it is very convenient to have it all at one location when you don't have to travel then to another location for your actual classes, because then you will also have people charging their mileage from the hotel to the location of the class back to the hotel. So it's much more convenient that everything's in one location. Used to, the county auditors, actual classes were on campus at UT, but then we had off-site <coughs> hotel blocks. And that became very chaotic in the lovely town of Austin. And so that's why the, our association has gone to having it all on one site. Plus, there's no bar on campus. Who has to talk alcohol when we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, it's just a Edit bar. that, Joe. <laughs> <coughs> Any other questions or comments from the court? My understanding with budget workshops this year is that everyone will make their presentation. What they present should be their final request with exception of the salaries, etc. And then at that time, it will be court moving numbers, adding numbers. 
we're not going to have multiple presentations by the same department. Like, after I hear all these today, I can't come back, or I shouldn't want to come back on Monday and say, woo I need. <laughs> it just prolongs everything. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I understand. Uh, you may I have said this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you may have said this, I like Judge Long was hunting for the paper initially. Um, are you within your current year's budget? Do you have a surplus? Are you running close? Or? Uh, I have 30% of my budget remaining. Okay, and we have three months left. So it's pretty good shape. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay, if you. It's recommended that you get a new employee that will be added to this budget. Is that correct? Correct. There is nothing in my request for salaries and fringe because right. we don't know so those. If you do have a new employee, they will require training, so your also your proper expense may be for the training. May <coughs> so yeah, if they have to have any outside training, uh, I'll have to either do an addition if I get the new employee. I feel like Michelle and I will be able to train on the packets that we utilize. So they, they don't need to continue with hours? No, no the assistants do not use the training. Oh, okay. How long have you been in your position? I am completing my 15th year. And so it would not be unthinkable that you could train whoever you happen to need. Yes, sir. Uh, you've had 15 years to learn the job. That, that changes daily, yes. It does. But uh, it also stays the same daily. Which is? Yes, yes. Okay. So on, with the problems we've had with this financial computer software, have, do you need to build any type of funding in there for additional training or tech support or because I don't think we're ever going to get the bugs out of this thing. Well the tech support it will be coming out of the IT department or an IT budget as all softwares have their annual maintenance and support. Those fees will be built in to that. I don't think I need to budget additional dollars for specialized training on site that's, training. That's or anything like that. And your computers are all, you don't have nothing for uh, they're relatively new. I, I do have in our current budget, which is through IT, a laptop so that I can access the system remotely. So I can bring it in here, and if y'all have a question, I can you know, pull up a bill or something right away. I have not acquired that in this year, but I'm, I'm planning on doing that within the current year budget. Any other questions or comments from the court? We're not going to have multiple appearances by different people that want to equal somebody else. So you might ought to be sure that you ask whatever questions you have on the first time around. There may not be a second time for all or any of them. Uh, I'm not threatening anybody or anything, but I just want you to be aware that we're not going to beat this thing to death multiple times of going over the same thing. So that said, uh, any other comments or questions or anything from the court? Thank you. Thank you, thank you ma'am. <coughs> the second uh, party for us to hear from on this will be the emergency management first people remember who happens to be my secretary at this particular time but she was uh, the emergency management person at the time this was started and she knows more about it probably than anybody else so that department's budget request is page 37 developments with the emergency management that the emergency management budget should be presented with the county judge's budget. And we should hold off until then. With what budget? With the county judge's budget. 
And that's all right with me, of course, or she wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I was looking for the page. What? what I'm sorry. 37? Did you say 37? Yes. 37. Well, I find 37 the way these are numbered. How far back should it be? It's way back. And I'll share a little bit about what happened. We received funding for a uh, uh, Homeland Security grant. Wait a second. Okay. I've got two thirty-seven <laughs> base numbers. That's because in the current year budget, special projects and nine one one addressing and emergency I've got management. The, well, wait a minute. I've got three. Is the first. The first one is emergency management. The second two are special projects and 911 addressing. They were all three combined in an operational budget. This year, the suggestion has been that they be split out, but because of how they were in this current year, that's how I put them in order here. Okay, the second two are? Special projects and 911 addressing. And then A, B, and C. And the last one is what again? I'm sorry. The second two are a combination of 911 addressing, special projects, and the county permitting agent. They're titled at the top of the page. Do what? Whatever. I say she wants to be here. Both. He wants us to spend about uh, thirty-five thousand dollars on a vehicle and upkeep, lights, cover, radio. This is ridiculous. We have a code compliance officer. This should be given code compliance if she has a full-time job as secretary. We have this already. We're, we're looking at redundancy. This is ridiculous. I know we'll discuss it later. But I just looked down through it. Are you looking at what page? Uh, third, first page 37. The first page 37. Well, the emergency manager, Dave, responds to stuff. They're going in their personal vehicles, and half the time they have a hard time getting into the location because nobody recognizes who they are. Now, the emergency manager <coughs> works for the county judge and is appointed by the county judge. And if you look in the state statute, uh, it explains all that. Shelby, it's a make work job. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's a statutory job. You don't have to have one. We that, have to have one. You don't want, we you don't have to have one. You show me where it says in the statute that we are required to have an emergency management coordinator. 418.101. Of the emergency management statute shows you tells you that it tells you that every ele the elected of uh, it goes to political subdivisions and jurisdictions and it just go, it, it just explains that the county judge is the emergency manager for the court for the for the county. However, he has the obligation to appoint a an emergency manager coordinator who, by the way, the judge during a time of a disaster or any type of any type of uh, uh, incident has powers of the governor to 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 uh, to uh, request everything except for the military forces. Okay, well, well you want to read the book? I'll I'll, I'll accept. Have you read four eighteen one one? And what does it say? Well, what 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 you read? Don't attack me. I'm well. You're looking laughing at me. Yeah, well, I can laugh. That's my right. I was gonna say this is this is ridiculous for a. a anyway. We ain't voting on it, so it doesn't matter. But you won't get me vote for it. Period. There have been some changes to the emergency management uh, that to emergency management that will change the budget. We received seventy-two thousand dollars in grant funds. Uh, notification that those funds have been awarded to us, pending our uh, certification and credentialing. If you go out and attempt to hire somebody else to do it and do all the training, you will not meet the timeline to receive that. 
Uh, I agree that sometimes, you know, combining two jobs is appropriate, but what you're discussing are is a job that's responsive to the sheriff, one elected official, and a job that's responsive to the judge, another elected official. And those two elected officials have to agree. And that's fine, I mean, if they agree with that. Um, but at this point in time, the grant funds are time sensitive, and we will lose those opportunities if uh, we don't make some changes. It has been uh, requested by uh, Commissioner Dubnik and approved by, uh, by Judge Long. I was going to say your full name, Walter R. Long. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> that I would continue as uh, Judge Long's assistant and do the grant uh, programming so we don't lose those opportunities uh, on a part-time basis as it was budgeted in the 2013-2014. And that's why I'm requesting at this time that we wait to discuss, because this budget is not any good. We can argue over it, but it's not any good. Uh, that's why I've requested that we wait and present the emergency management coordinator with the judge, judge's budget, if that's okay. I have no issue with you serving in both positions. Don't misunderstand that. I just think that we need to rethink some of the uh, requests on here. But if you want to present it at that time in a different form, I think that's a good idea. Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Will you get a salary as the emergency management coordinator and as Judge Walker it would be a part-time salary for the same part-time fee that it was to hire someone who had a full-time job uh, to respond to incidents on a part-time basis prior to the job becoming a full-time job. What? Go ahead. It would be impossible for me to do emergency management and be Judge Long's uh, assistant in an eight-hour day. Uh, but. Uh, because we have the opportunities and we'll lose them if we don't work on them, uh, I have agreed to uh, manage those funds on a part-time basis. There, there is a side benefit that uh, Susanna is not bringing up. And as much as I disagree with the program, last year the county spent, or this year, spent a substantial amount of money getting her certified in these things for whatever certification That's is worth. That's not the truth. The county didn't spend a it, tremendous amount of money. Okay. I spent my own money okay. to to uh, finish my co-show. Okay. And that was my own money. And that was about $6,000. Okay. And the NIMS coursework is free to, uh, to emergency management professionals through, the, uh, uh, through FEMA, through the Department of Homeland Security. Okay, I stand corrected. I'll check into it. The other things that were spent for credentialing for, for the Texas Emergency Management Conference, which is a nominal fee of $175. This year, I volunteered at the conference on my own time to so that the county could recoup that money and ask. I intentionally asked her to continue to administer or do whatever you want to call it, uh, her part of this this uh, uh, funding, for the simple reason that she's familiar with it because she's worked on it for the last year, and uh, is it, going to be more successful, uh, which is already shown with the result than anybody else would be trying to come in and start the same program. And uh, this is not going to be a permanent thing that she does it every year, but she moved into my administrative assistance program here. And I thought that for the maximum benefit, we should keep her working on this same thing. And she doesn't have time to take care of the job here and to work full time on, on uh, the other project. Uh, 
if anybody has any kind of uh, real problem with this, well, you need to speak up. You need to talk to me. You need to talk to the courts. Uh, because at this point, this is what we're going to do this year. Uh, if anybody can show me where it's better to do it differently and will be more uh, financially uh, attractive to the whole county to do it some other way, I would be certainly willing to listen. To listen, and nobody has talked to me about it at all. Uh, and if you do have a problem, you need to talk. And that's one of the reasons we're here today. Judge, if I can offer, in the past we have had some positions that were combined. For instance, several years ago, the county judge's administrative assistant secretary also used to serve as the VSO. When we budgeted those years, we budgeted that as a combined position, county judge's secretary slash VSO. So therefore, the rate of pay was different, but it was not both individual salaries. There was not necessarily an average of the salaries, but that would be my suggestion, because there may come events that happen during eight to five hours that require Susanna to go out on site as the EMC. And so therefore, if she's getting paid her full eight hours to be the administrative assistant, but yet she's not here because she's responding to EMC, I know there's already been a lot of rumblings about double dipping, and that would be the way to avoid it, would be to actually budget for a combined position and do some type of median salary between the positions. Adjust the hourly pay rate because it would be covering two positions rather than just one. I understand that. And that's what I was, that's the direction I was headed in my question. You know, because there, like she says about the double dipping, I have nothing against you, Susanna. But, you know, what she just said, I agree with. But you're talking about for the next uh, FY, right? Correct. And in this one, 2014 to 2015, it would remain the salary of the secretary and the salary of the part time? Well, I don't see. Or do we change it I now? think that, in my opinion, that it's going to have to be an agenda item to combine the positions for the remainder of this fiscal year, adjust the pay rate. Then we will do a line item move from the EMC salary line item into the county judge's administrative assistant so line. That position will have a slash, it'll be. Correct. That's And that's my the way suggestion. to get it from the double dipping. Any other comments, questions? 2017, the plans have to be redone? Yes, sir. You need to start that this year or next year? Yes, the process is already started. Okay. By the way, there's an emergency operation plan, basic plan with, I think, 26 annexes yes. that have to be redone and, and every five years and submitted to the state for approval. And this affects everybody's Homeland Security funding. I will comment that since we have the grant and Susanna started, I think she needs to continue working on it so we don't jeopardize that getting that money. Uh, we also need to start looking around to see if we can find someone who is willing to take the, the emergency management job either as a part-time or as a full-time, whatever, whoever we can find. We need to look for someone to do that job. But I don't believe she wants to have both jobs continue. I don't know whether that's correct or not. Is it? No. If you find someone to work uh, full time in another entity and then also do the emergency management, they're not here. Okay, so you know, we, need to, we need to investigate and see what, who we can get to. She needs to continue to do it right now, not to jeopardize the grant. Susanna, what is the grant? written for? Is it for equipment purchases? Is it to yes, supplement yes. salary? Is it to, what it's are the... It's for equipment purposes. It's specifically to uh, build out that EOC trailer. And at the time that we had that large uh, incident uh, out on uh, County Road 343, to have a working uh, vessel for people to be able to work, for canteening, uh, and then also to have appropriate radio systems and so forth, 
inside of it would have been beneficial. Uh, part of the thing, uh, part of what was discussed uh, in a I don't want to say it was an after action because it, it was more like a hot wash uh, was that we had some difficulties getting all parties involved together because everybody was kind of in their own. We had to set up a, an incident command there with that trailer. At this point in time it's not, it, it needs to be updated. I just paid. wanted everyone to be aware of what the grant funds were available for. Is it $100,000 or anything? It's $72,000. I apologize. When I first heard it, I thought, oh, because what was presented to Commissioner Sport was up to $100,000. But we did get the full amount of funding that we requested. Will it take all of that to prepare the treasure you're speaking of? That's what the monies were requested for. <coughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> if not, then we don't. And I'm guessing this is on a reimbursement basis that we no, don't fund this the money. No, not. The EMPG grant program is a reimbursement basis. It's a 50% reimbursement based on your performance, uh, and that means training and exercise, uh, planning, all of the things that are done within the county with uh, uh, all of the different jurisdictions, and then the uh, the state. Della designates money through the federal government to uh, the to the county, basically for having their plans and for exercising their plans. And that is a 50% <coughs> buyback of anything that is purchased for the purpose of emergency. If it, it falls down to the fact that uh, we have to have this vehicle, I'm going to make the one of the pickups that uh, presently is assigned to permitting, which is fairly new available. Uh, we have two vehicles. We can live without one of them. So if it comes to that, and I'm not saying I'm in favor of it, but if it comes to that, I would propose that you think about using one of these and upgrading it to a point to where you can use it rather than spending any money on a vehicle. I believe that that's fair. And the vehicle was a discussion that was discussed last year. And basically, other people who had done the job, who were appearing at incident sites in their personal vehicles, had an understanding of the liability that that would incur, both to them <coughs> and to the county, to them personally and to the county. I mean, OK, you're showing up to, a, to a, an incident site. Uh, where the general public is not allowed to be in. And you, your vehicle is, number one, it's parked there. It's not <coughs> it's not usable to, to assist in, in traffic direction or anything. It's just sitting there. And so it, it just, it, it makes sense to have something that is county-owned rather than have someone either at different hours of the night or at times outside of the 8 to 5 driving around in their personal vehicle. Well, what, what comes to mind is the uh, trailer also. I had forgotten about the trailer. So if you've got a trailer and you don't have a vehicle, it's unfortunate as it is. Of course, the Sheriff's Department does have substantial vehicles, and they are usually available on a 24-hour basis. But if it, if it becomes the court's decision, then as a fallback, like I say, I'd like to find something in the fleet already rather than go out and buy something brand new. Other comments? Questions? That if we kept up with the EMPG grant program, it would be 50%. On a vehicle? Any other thing that needs to be brought out, Suzanne? No. I think you've got it all covered. <coughs> if I said yes, I need to strike right in the middle of this room. There's oh. always something to let you know you're not on top of it. Well, let's hope it is somebody that deserves it. Rather, rather, rather than a non deserving folks. Is the county mitigation plan coming up for renewal also? The, the county mitigation plan is something that's been worked on uh, along with the region. That's one of the regional projects. 
And it's also something that's recommended in all of the uh, productivity that we have going on with oil and gas is that we work on mitigation plans with our regional partners. But FEMA's plan, at one time they weren't going to let a region uh, be allowed. They were going to do maybe one or two counties? Yes. Yes, and our sister county that looks the most like us is Atascosa County, and I have been in ongoing contact with their EMC. Is that going to be a cost that we're going to have to share? Because it's going to not going to be a cheap event. That's not something that we've discussed on cost share. Because it, it'll be, it have to be completed by 2017 or, or, start of, or it starts? The state's recommendation for me Because that's all going to be done by probably a consultant of some sort. Unless they, Possibly. unless ACOG is going to provide somebody to, to do all that they did the last time. Possibly. We, and, and we put in the budget of uh, $1,800 for consulting fees if we, if we need that within the next year. What I handed you was just some documentation on um, the requested salary. I'm not sure if salaries are being discussed today or if that's going to be another uh, budget workshop within itself, but that's some documentation from the salary survey people and from, a, a, uh, from the DeWitt County salary on their county treasurer. I asked the Atascosa County Treasurer for hers and I have not received that yet, but that's a documentation that you have in there. Also is the quote last year from A&W on the furniture 
Um, we have money in this year's budget for remodeling of the building, painting, etc. I would like to make Sylvia full-time <coughs> position and with that money, I would like to do the remodeling to move Elaine into the supply closet now, remodel the supply closet into an office and then put Sylvia in Elaine's chair. And I, we have money, in, I think, in this year's budget to do that, so I wouldn't need to do the uh, $7,000 for furnishing and remodeling on that. And that 7000 probably is a little high on the remodeling. I had um, Zane come in and he said it would probably take about three or $4,000 to, re to remodel that built that uh, supply closet into another office, but that was him doing the work when he was with the county, so I'm not sure if that would be more or not on that. Uh, as Luana had talked about, the mediator between herself and I, he has asked that, suggested that she have an extra person also. He has suggested I have an extra person also, but I prefer mine to be a part-timer because she would be basically feel, keeping up with the filing, um, et cetera. I would need her to particularly have a desk. I have a table and a small desk in my office that Sylvia uses now. That person could continue to use that. Um, would kind of like to look possibly at a college person to do that. That they would have some flexible hours on a couple of days a week to come in for that. My telephone expense, I increased a little bit because of having to add an extra line into that office, <coughs> the new office building. <coughs> Travel, I have to go to Galveston next year for my <coughs> conference for investment. So that's a little further travel than San Antonio from this year. I up to my conference expenses a little bit also because of the, the uh, hotels, rates. I put $1,000 in there for a lane for conferences. That's in case there's something I feel like she could possibly go for one day when we have our conference in Austin, something that the assistant treasurer can uh, learn from. A lot of the treasurers do take their assistants with them, but I don't, she can't be gone from the office. Both of us can't be gone from the office for three or four days. That's why I put that in there for her. Uh, my computer expense, my computer is good, and Elaine's is good, and we bought Sylvia a brand new one, but I don't know. Anything could happen, and I don't know if that's something we could move to the e IT department also. I think that's where all computers are now anyways, we'll want to write. Yes. So that probably something could be moved to IT. Uh, the bond is the same, the dues are the same. And the office expense, I did increase that quite a lot because of like Luana said, with reports with this new system. Normally when I'm reconciling bank statements, the old system would print about a 20 page report. Now I'm getting up to 75 to 100 page report for just one account because it's so much more detailed on that. I am asking that we upgrade the Time Clock Plus, which is the Time Clock system that we use now. There is an upgrade on it. Um, I would rather it come from the IT budget, not mine, but I do want the, the county to be aware of it. If you're interested, I can send you a little video of the new upgrade to it. What was the cost of that upgrade by? Oh, I thought I gave that to you. I know you emailed me that video, and I, I don't remember if it was on that. I don't have it, sorry. I thought I had sent you probably, uh, I don't know, 7000 maybe. Okay, and on your telephone expense, your explanation says due to adding another line, not another phone number, but the other line in the remodeled office. Right, area. and I think there's a phone line in there already, but it's just because it's another phone, I would think there would be more expense to that. And probably just to have it turned on, that kind of, and the number moved from the number that's originally in there now to my phone number. <laughs> Isn't it possible to talk to the phone company and find out what the expense will be of this? Yeah, yes, and yes. Why that. don't we do that when we're okay. estimating cost and such things instead of it might be this or it might be that? Or if you don't mind, why don't you yes, find that? I can that? do that and get a more definite number on that one. Yes. Okay. and equipment you said that that you would use for the new for the remodeling of the supply room yes and we have 
$50,000, I think, in this year's current budget, Luana, does that sound right? It's going to put my papers. And we could we had used originally planned that for the finished painting, the building, and then we kind of started talking about moving people around, and we didn't want to start messing with that painting if we're going to be changing, and if you're going to give her another person in her office, maybe we can just do it all at one time, but somehow managed to get in this fiscal year that money do that instead of putting in next year's budget since it's already in this year's budget. I'll ask you like I asked Luana did a you have any anticipation of any cost or related to that new program that y'all are having so much problems with? No. No, because like she had said the tech support is part of our monthly fee. We've always paid them, or not, not a monthly fee, I guess, of the initial amount that we paid was two years of tech support included in it. And then after that, then you'll pay a monthly tech support. So, so I don't think there's any more training available to us that we haven't already taken. It's just sitting down and learning the system every day, just using the system every day and uh, getting used to it. And like my part-timer, she wouldn't even need a computer because she has no reason to be on it. She won't be receiving money in or anything like that. So what are the benefits explained to them of upgrading the time clock plus? I think with like the comp time, it's going to be doing the comp time more the way we want it to it, do it, where it does it at the quarter hours. Instead of doing it like per minutes, it does it on the quarter hours. Uh, there's easier way for the employees to get to it, gives them more information. And just basically upgrading into the system itself. Are all these time clock things working? Yes. Because I hear tell that they're not all working. Well, sometimes I know like the sheriff's department has issues with theirs, and it's because of the <coughs> iPhones themselves, Time Clock Plus was not keeping up with the upgrades to be compatible with the iPhones whenever they do an a uh, yeah, upgrade but it takes them a little bit of time to get to that but we other than if the internet's down no you cannot get on it but it makes it easier for, like with payroll because we just import that file and it fits it into everybody's hours instead of having to manually put them in pardon me for not paying attention early on but uh, I, I heard you say something about you had something some money remaining in your budget for furnishings for this year? Well, it's the building itself has the fifty thousand dollars for remodeling. Uh -huh. We had wanted we redid the floors and we redid the restrooms and then we didn't get that finished last year's budget. So this year's budget we put in fifty thousand for the painting and whatever else needed to be done. And I would like to use that money to remodel the uh, supply room that we have now into another office. And that was the item that you said Zane had estimated $3,500. Yes, okay. yes. And then I gave you a quote from A&W from last year on some furniture just to get an idea on what it would cost. But if you did it now, this current fiscal year, there is money set aside for it as I understand. There is money in the budget. The catch will be getting a contractor to get it done. In that Correct. time frame. Yes. So I will most likely put that on the June 30th agenda to go ahead and spend that money. Did we get a, receive the written quote from the painter? Have you received that? No, I didn't. Yeah, and I guess Brenda didn't. Either. Okay. And if we can get this done and this FY, that would include, you know, 50 we can get the furnishings or we need any? Yes, too? yes. And that would be the 23... I think it what it was on that that quote that we have but yeah 2500 that was for the desk the credenza <coughs> the shelving etc so is that to equip the new office space or is that new furnishings for, for the new all your office space just for her office space yes I thought the painter was here this morning <laughs> would it be a conflict Last year there was discussion at the same budget type workshop that we were going to have a CFO and it affected the treasurer's budget. 
in relation to how many assistants, if we were going to have a CFO, it was in the budget last year. I was just wondering if you all were going to just do away with that idea or where we work with that. I don't think there's been a decision, a final decision made on what we're going to do with it, to be honest with you. I'm not aware of it. Does any of the commissioner's court think there has been? There's not anything in this, in this set of budgetary figures, Lawana, for a CFO, is there? No, sir, because there is not an existing apart department to present that budget request. Anything else? Judge, can I make a comment? As far as the, that building over there while you're talking about their budgets, uh, we had an emergency over there the other day, and their internet system was so poor that when they set off the county alert system, it didn't work because the, inter the internet connection there is so poor in that building and this building. So we had to respond the other way by going down there. But uh, if something needs to be put in the budget or, or some of the money spent in the current budget to upgrade the internet system there. It is terrible there and terrible at this building. There was a, I was there in the Moana, no, I was, and Brenda was gone. Uh, there was an incident in the front that some customers, tax customers got into it and they were fixing to start swinging at each other and so we had to physically dial 911 instead of being able to use the cop sink because our internet, again, is very slow and that's... The reason I bring it up is affected the emergency system and the yes. time clock. Y'all are talking about the yes. time clock? Not working right. The reason it doesn't work right because the internet connection and our power technology. And that may have something to do with that too. Yes, and I understand that during that situation, shortly before that event happened, that we had had a power surge, and sometimes when that happens, you have to reboot your computer to have access back to our software system, to have access to encode and to have the inner uh, cup sync and to have internet access. <laughs> So that may have been a reason because we had the power surge that the cop sink wasn't accessible also, but we definitely, as Art presented a couple of meetings ago, need to strongly consider in this next year's budget upgrading to the fiber optic. We need to strongly consider in this year's budget. Whether it's a downgrade outlay or their own budget, but you do have a problem there. It's just affecting the services there. And I'd like to see in this year's budget if possible because if we wait till October, it could be January or February before they get to us and we really need to, to get that done quickly. Robert, this this uh, is a hardwired system? Yes, sir. It's an antiquated uh, old hardwire system that just needs to be updated and I think it would be, I don't think it'd be a relatively a lot of money to do that, but now they could run a cable over here and furnish this building and also that other building also, because it, it affects job performance for all the departments in this building. Has I'm not sure if you were present at the meeting with Art, with Art Comp. I was not. presentation about installing fiber optic cables, and they are working with AT&T right now to try and develop a plan where they aren't going to charge the county for the actual physical lane, but we'll have to enter into a long-term agreement guaranteeing so much usage, et cetera. Very good. I wasn't aware of that. I'm sorry, but uh, it doesn't need to be addressed. Order. Lawana, there are. We could start that this year. We could start that this year with funds that are in the IT budget right now. I don't know that there is enough to. You can't break a project down. You would have to budget for it as a whole, whether it was finished in this fiscal year or if it overlapped, we'd have to put some in that one. Uh, there's not enough in there now to do the entire project based on the cost. And what Art had indicated is it wouldn't be an upfront cost. It's going to be spread out over several months, 36 months, I think, was his. All right, but Art's, Art's cost, OK, AT&T would not charge that initial cost. We're Correct. We'd get the over $300,000 worth. We have enough in the current budget for Art's right, fees. But Art's fee would be a minimum of $15,000, if I remember what he said. So. But we could have that fund in, in yes, it's IT a, right now, Well, we could initiate it right now. Correct. So we should talk about that. Yes. Okay. Please. Anything else? Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you just, you, they have the papers that say how much you're <coughs> upping, like a telephone expense okay. and a travel expense. But we didn't hear what that was up. I'm sorry. Okay, the, 
office, for office expense, three thousand. <coughs> the telephone, one thousand two hundred. <coughs> Travel, two thousand. My conference, one thousand seven hundred fifty. One thousand for Elaine. My computer is one thousand five hundred, which would actually kind of go throw into IT. And I don't need a new computer right now, but you never know. Okay, thank you. Uh, Miss Eilers, were you wanting the increase from the current budget or what she's requesting for next year? I, I just wanted what she was asking okay. for in this line. She gave me the Thank you. Mm -hmm. nice. my, my question is what Luana alluded to, and then you may have gone through this if you did. Pardon me for not paying attention. But how much increase is there in office expense, telephone, travel, etc.? I don't have my current budget in front of me. I'm sorry. Let me ask it in a different way. Is there a substantial increase no, in the No. That's all I need to do. I can tell you real quickly. Hold on a little bit. Our current office expense, well, no, because she's amended since the original budget. So I can't tell you because what I just have printed is the budget as it was adopted, but she came back to court after the fiscal year began and requested some amendments. Yes, because on the original budget from this year, only left me in the office and without an assistant. So when we came back and amended the budget to add the assistant, I had to add another $2,500, I believe, in my office expense to get the computer and the supplies that I needed for that. Yes. What did you start with last year? Office expense itself started at seven fifty. Okay, but then there was an additional. I think it was like twenty five hundred for the computer and. Um, Paper so just increase it. I think it's two thousand twenty five hundred might have been my original budget, anyways. And it's already over three thousand. Right, then it, they dropped it down to seven fifty. Shelby was kind enough to share with me. Uh, <coughs> I guess your request for last year, um, and I'm not nitpicking you, but how come the bond went up? Because now I have to bond Elaine also, and that's. Have we got everything discussed on that that needs discussion? The seven thousand, right? If we do the, we find a contract to do that this year, then that seven thousand would be gone. Yes, would be gone next yes. year. Yes, yes. And possibly the extra cost on the telephone if we could get that included on there once we get the cost of that may lower also because that 1200 would include the new phone can just turning it on basically is what they're going to have to do and change that number to what my number is but i'll call the phone company okay why answer. why haven't we already taken care of this i honestly didn't even think about doing that um, i didn't why was it in the book because if you're going to allow me to remodel that building then i or that office building then i would need to turn that phone line on. I don't, I don't really understand, but I don't suppose I have to.
We're ready. Take Good, off, morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, for the library system, and this will be covering all four libraries in the county, uh, if you will get raises this year, we're requesting a 5% salary increase for the directors and the assistant directors. Kennedy and Corn City Libraries are asking for a pay scale of $10 per hour for the part-time and summer library aides to be more competitive with the uh, job market in the county. They have some experienced workers and they would like to keep them. Uh, we figured retirement at the rate that it is now. Um, and those things I'm sure will probably change. Health benefits, we just uh, figured that at $470 per person. Uh, I'm sure that will also change. Travel expenses will remain at $2,500 per year. And the library supplies, equipment, furnishings, and miscellaneous expenses, that's budgeted at $32,000. And this is for all four libraries, so keep that in mind. Uh, I think there is a slight increase for that figure. For automation and technology, last year's budget was $24,000. We are requesting $26,000 this year to help cover the cost of the licensing fees for e-books. Each of the libraries now offers e-book services. Uh, it is at a cost of $1,500 per library. $500 is for the licensing fee. And through the overdrive system, we are required to spend $1,000 on the purchase of e-books. So that is something that we have to budget for every year. Also, in automation and technology is our licensing fees for our automation uh, catalogs and checkout system. And that varies from library to library because it's based on the um, number of materials that the library has cataloged. And of course, Kennedy and Barnes City have a higher inventory than Fall City and Murphy does. For insurance, and this is for uh, the contents of all four libraries, that will remain at $4,000 per year. Uh, for books, we're asking for an increase of $4,000. Uh, they go up continually. Um, it's even shocking to me after all this time that $25 for a little bit of 10 children's books. But that's the way of the world. So we are asking for an increase of 10 books. For the summer reading program, we're asking for $14,000, which would come down to $3,500 per library. This is a big expense for each of the libraries and the patrons benefit from the program and they expect us to do something special for that month during the summer when we have our program. And last year we were not able to get the funding because of excessive carryover. And as usual, any carryover funds are retained by the library system and uh, they will be used to upgrade computers, purchase copy machines and printers. And uh, it also helps to cover the cost of books purchased when the new budget year begins and before the tax receipts start to come. And that's our budget. I picked up one item that was an increase, which was uh, books, and I haven't pulled my <coughs> last year's stuff out, but were there any disregarding the salary since that's not under consideration right. this morning? Were there any other items that had increases, substantial increases, or anything? Uh, books is the highest increase. Um, Two thousand dollar increase for automation and technology last year. It was budgeted at twenty four thousand, and this year it's at twenty six thousand. And that also covers the cost of computers and uh, repair. So that's for all four libraries, keep that in mind. Yeah. So, uh, and then part of uh, supplies, equipment, furnishings, and miscellaneous expenses, I think, uh, I'm a little bit <coughs> not sure what it was last year, but I think that's an, a little bit of an increase, I'm not sure. Uh, Shelby got it out again. It's the same as it was. Oh, is it? Okay. So really books and automation are the two line items that we've asked for increases in. And then the summer reading program, we'd like to do that as a separate line item. You do this, I mean, this is probably crazy. <coughs> do, the, do the cities contribute anything at all to the library other than the building? Uh, they pay for our utilities and phone. At least they do in Ball City. Mm -hmm. I think that's the case with the other libraries as well. And the cleaning, we also pay for the cleaning, which is 
Yeah, we pay for that out of our own funds. Yeah. The city does pay for the Who is we when y'all are saying we? No, we pay for our own. Who is we that you're saying we about? About the pay for our own funds. Oh, at Fall City, I'm so sorry. It's at Fall City. We pay for our own cleaning. Out of your local funds? Yes, out of our local funds. But then Miss Lissy is indicating that the city the of Corn City, city pays for Corn City. Yes, we're paying for Corn City. The city and is paying for Corn City Cleaning Library. And then Mrs. It's Stinger it's indicated it's that the city of Kennedy pays for the library cleaning. And some of the utilities. Right, utilities. And then of course they, they insure their buildings because their their buildings. Will, the county just insures the contents of each library. Yes. Each each library is. Insured by the town in which it's located. The physical structure, yes. Just the building, yes, sir. <clears throat> None of the salaries Dixie here have an increase, right? They're the same as they were last year. Just you said if there was any kind of increase in salaries, you would like a We'd like to be included in that. But uh, Kennedy and Quan City are specifically asking if their uh, part summertime and part time help could be increased to ten dollars per hour for minimum wage because. I mean, the, that's the part timers yes. are asking for that. Yes, and usually that's that's the temporary the part timers. Temporary part time and summer. Because time. Ball City and Rungi have part time assistant library directors. Twenty hours. Uh, well, no, they, they vary by library. But what specifically the library board has asked for is, Carn City and Kennedy have part time temporary positions that either work after school yeah, or summertime. during the summer programs mm -hmm. yes I see what and that yes. those are paid at minimum wage or right as now they call them in at will are those normally field. like high school children or i think corn cities is a student i'm not sure about kennedy's kennedy's is a member and i've been doing it several several years yes. at minimum wage mm -hmm. and they come in when someone's ill or someone's mm -hmm. on vacation or and uh because it's kind of hard to run it sometimes when it's just you, you by yourself. So. And on behalf of the library board, I did attend their annual meeting when they did their budget. And uh, not to throw roses, but I think they did a reasonably conservative job of everything. Uh, and you know, I guess everybody has has. Uh, approach Mr. Chapman, Mr. David Chapman and I were supposed to go visit Judge Long and uh, give him the insight into the functions of the library board. Obviously we haven't done that, but he's on it. I just volunteered to go along for moral support. But anyway, I, I, um, I appreciate the fact that uh, they do take care of things in these communities. and. I know in Kennedy and Carn City it's very important, and it certainly is important in the small communities. It's a, a, a center, uh, another center like the post office where people can go, and, and, and there's many other services available at the libraries that are non-book services, the Wesley nurse visits, uh, their social aspects and everything else. So the buildings are well utilized. And I would also like to add, we, we are required by the state to provide a uh, copy machine for public use, fax machine for public use, and computers for public use. So, you know, and like Mr. Reynolds said, in the smaller libraries, that is a, a big asset to have. And actually, having four libraries in this county is a big asset. When people start looking to move and make their homes here, that's a good point to bring out. Yes, we do have a public library and we do have this access. So. Dixie James was asking about raises on your individual library pages. Those salaries reflected are including the 5% increase, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they are. I just wanted to confirm that for James. Yes. Okay. That's all. Also handed out to you each a copy of the last board minutes where the board did approve the budget that we have presented to you. That's the last page. Uh, it was the one I just. Uh, it's up there on the. Oh.
How many temporary part timers? There's are just two, one each for Kennedy and Park City. There's two, and how many hours are they put? It varies. Park City has set hours for theirs for the duration of their summer reading program. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And then Kennedy is, is usually four weeks during the summer reading program, and then Occasionally, they come in if the librarian or her assistant can't be there for some reason. They might come in a few hours, like if somebody's sick, they'll feel like you're right, or if they're having some special programming or something, they need some extra help. So it's not like every week or it's oh, just no, as no. needed. Kind of most And that's for Kennedy. That's right. For Kennedy. And Carn City has adopted yeah. hours. Uh, yes, they do have budgeted hours. Uh, Twenty-five uh, hours per week. Yeah. 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 For the temporary just for usually the duration of your summer reading program, which is about a month, maybe six weeks. Okay, okay, four or six weeks. And nothing during the year like Kennedy? No, year. she hasn't, uh, not during this last uh, year so far, they haven't used her, so, except for now. Jailer position we're going to talk about. 
Okay, the five were the nurse, the maintenance, two cooks. There's two cooks, There's two, two maintenance people, a nurse, and two janitors. Okay. How do you do their uniforms and stuff? Do you just tell them to go buy it, or, or do y'all have a set place to go get it? Sterling. Sterling, they usually go get the uniforms there, and then, uh, you know, it's the, it's it's slowly the payroll. Yeah, the they, payroll. Yeah, we provide them with the, the gun and the basic leather equipment and all that. As far as uniform, the, the county provides $50 a month for that employee. Six hundred dollars a year, so that's why it's, it's written that way. So twenty nine, it's going from twenty nine four to thirty three six to add those in there. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, we'll move down to janitorial supplies, which is down further. Currently, in the budget, uh, we have fifteen thousand. Uh, excuse me, we have 7,500, I'm sorry, in there uh, for the current budget. But um, once we come online, the kitchen's going to need their dish soap, all the supplies in order to run a kitchen. The laundry service will have, uh, will need, they'll need a soap powder, things like that, to run the actual laundry in the jail. In addition to the paper supplies and our Obviously, the, off the supplies that be used to run the office, which is for your restrooms and things like that. So I've asked to increase that from 7,500 to 15,000. The jail contract, as it's written, has some dispensers in there, but like the jail commission requires in the laundry room, for example, you can't just have a box of soap sitting there where an inmate cannot have access to it. You have to put the actual laundry so in a locked closet and you have to run a line through the wall to the actual machine and there has to be a dispenser there to dispense the soap into the machine. And so that's what these additional costs are. We have to purchase those dispensers. The uh, manufacturer who supplies the soap, they supply the setup, the lines, they do all the work. We just have to buy a basic dispenser to dispense it. So the actual person that's supplying the product is actually going to provide those costs. We uh, are going to use a company called Matera, which is a local San Antonio company who has agreed to come in here and, and supply that for us to save the county some money. Uh, we've worked with the auditor's office, and if it's under $50,000, we don't have to bid that particular item. So on a $15,000 item like that, they've agreed to do that. We just have to purchase the supplies and the minimum amount of dispensing equipment. The next one, if we move down the line, is, is cell phones. We currently are the administrator for the county cell phone uh, contract. Uh, when I came here two years ago, I had a, con a contact in Austin. I knew of a state contract where we could save the county a substantial amount of money on cell phones and on air cards to use to run computers. So I contacted that sales rep, and he gave the county a state, state bid contract which is basically an unlimited contract that allows the county to use phone service at an unlimited rate at a very substantial reduced rate. And so the current price of air cards is $37 for air card per month and cell phones are $55. Uh, we'd like to continue with that contract, but the reason there's an increase in cost is because every August the state rebids that contract and there, there's always an annual increase, and that's why that is. So um, I built in the annual increase into the, co uh, the contract that the AT&T rep has provided. The county at one time had Verizon service here, but the Verizon service, the cost was extremely higher. That's why we went to AT&T for better coverage and a substantial uh, reduction in cost to the county. Even though you're talking about probably $4,500 here on an increase, it includes those costs. And then also we're, we've added three more telephones to it, so, which will be the nurse, which previously we've not had because she's gonna be on call. When she's not there, if we have something going on tonight, we have to be able to contact her at all times. Uh, same way with the dietitian and, and the one maintenance man. So I've added three phones in there because these people are the people that are gonna be on call. So uh, I'm not going to give a county telephone or the sheriff is not to somebody that just wants one. These phones are being asked to be provided to people that are actually on call. That would have to be come out and if there's some kind of problem in the jail, they'll have to respond to that. 
So those additional costs of that $4,500 is for the in increase in phone plan and three additional phones. So how many air cards do y'all have and how many phones? Okay, at the present time, uh, we have 34 uh, phones times 55 times 12 months. We're asking to go from 34 to 37 phones. Uh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. I look wrong. It's 38 phones, but I'm trying to figure out where the other one's at here. Uh, I know where it's at. We had 34. We added code enforcement, which got a phone. That makes 35. So we currently have 35, and we're asking for three additional, which would make it 38. So uh, the additional cost, like I said, it would, it would, the current budget is 22440 and it would go to 27360 So you've not got a calculator. It's the difference between that's about 40, let's see, $5,100 maybe. And so only deputies have air cards on their computers to allow that is correct. for their vehicles, correct? Right. That is correct. I know that a lot of times uh, cell phones in government agencies can be abused or, or also can be the, the, the price of air, uh, air cards and phones can be abused. Uh, I've taken it upon myself to watch that. We do a monthly monitoring on, on what people are using. Uh, we have a cell phone policy in the county that is distributed among all the departments. Not only the sheriff's office that you don't use a cell phone for personal use or for any private business along with that. Also, we have a social media policy where they're not allowed to use our county cell phone to take pictures of events that go on in the county and post them on the internet. So we have put those policies in place to make sure that the county is in compliance with not only liability issues, but we don't want that information out there because of HIPAA and a lot of other reasons. But the county has done a good job in controlling their cell phone costs uh, compared to a lot of agencies. I've worked for other agencies that the cell phones are off the wall. That's why you obviously see me standing here, I have two phones because uh, the law changed in 2010 that says that any government entity, including employees, agencies, those, your personal phone now is, is subject to the Open Records Act. So if they file a request with any agency in this county or any department in this county and they ask for your cell phone records, if you use your personal phone for county business, all your personal items can also be discoverable. And that's the reason why we have a, a county cell phone uh, for that. Uh, there's a certain couple of exceptions to that rule, but the courts have ruled here recently that there's, there's very little privacy. So that's why we as and county employees, and I've suggested to the other department heads, don't use your personal phone for county business. Because if you do, uh, under the current ruling, there's a current ruling that's just been out here in the last two years. Your phone is subject to be taken and discovered. Your personal pictures, your personal items, and all of that. So, um, Herb Hancock and I have talked about it, and I, I know from my state days why we did it up there, but uh, the law has changed on that ruling. So, uh, 27,000 is for the number of phones we have, I don't feel like it's unreasonable for this county. Robert. The other day, you were working on a computer because it said it had a virus. And I asked you, I said, do y'all have virus protection on all your computers? And he expressed to me that you do a free download of AVG. But does CompSync offer any type of virus protection for their program? They have a built-in firewall commissioner and some other things where they can't have their own system hacked. But as far as the local machines here now, we just get the 90-day free thing that comes with the computer when you buy it, or the 30 days, whichever it is. But to answer your question, no. Uh, this county, which I was hoping would employ an IT director uh, sometime in the future, that's one of the things that the county as a whole, not only as the patrol car computer, but I've noticed it on all the desktops because I installed yeah. that emergency system on all the desktops. None of, none of our county computers have an active antivirus program. So we're leaving our network wide open. And those are just things that you need to budget for every year and upgrade your antivirus and your stuff every year. Uh, we've had two recent viruses on our patrol cars. Uh, if we catch it in time, 
I'm IT savvy enough where I rebuild it, wipe it all off, and do that. We've had to have Jeff do one of ours recently because it had such a bad virus, we couldn't do anything with it. But the county does need, in their IT budget, needs to put and figure out how many computers we have and actually uh, be a little bit proactive in that because they have not been in the past. Well, I will say in the auditor department, we do have antivirus on all three of ours, and they are current. Okay. Well, I'll just tell you, and I'll share another fact since you brought that up. Um, we just got audited this past week by the state. The DPS came in and audited all our t and all that, and we were fine, but our current antivirus was expired. So that's one of the things they gigged us on. So uh, what I do is go back behind that and, and fix that, but uh, that's one of the things that they look at also. Well, it's a concern that I have with all the things been going on because I hate to, for us to lose a computer system, you know, due to a virus. And I'm sure, but some of the people, on the, you know, we didn't have automatic updates when we start doing because people will, will just totally forget to update. Antivirus on a computer is kind of like putting tires on your car. You can have a hundred thousand dollar car and have cheap tires, and if you don't keep up with them, you know, it's going to ruin the, the vehicle. And, it's the same way with the computer. Well, also, even the, your Norton antiviruses, your McAfee's, those are nominal costs nominal. to protect information, but they also are very user-friendly and self-installable. I don't see why it is, and I see all the bills that we constantly are paying Texas CompuFix just to install an antivirus. That's ridiculous. It takes maybe 30 minutes of time, but yet we pay somebody $85 an hour to do well, that. If this county had an IT director, that would be one of their, uh, or, or an IT person, I should say, that would be one of their daily things is to go around and do that. You can you can now buy packages for agencies. That's what we did at the state, whether it's McAfee or whatever. You buy one package deal, you go around and install it on every computer that the county owns. And see, if you buy an individual package, you can only use it on one machine. Well, but we buy mean, it where it covers all three that's of them right. when we buy it. But so the, you, that's a department head's downfall right here because they're, it's simple. You press uninstall, it takes the old one off. You press install and it installs the new one. It all, it all comes down to dollars and cents. That's all it is. It, if, it's, if it's 50 bucks a machine and you have 150 machines, you're just going to have to budget for that amount of money. That's all it is is dollars and cents. But I guarantee you over the long run we're paying the computer guy $85 an hour to come and clean these machines is ridiculous. It needs to be done and budget and put in there. Well, there may need to be some type of policy adopted by the court also of use of computers. Uh, you know, a lot of people streamline music during the work day, et cetera, which that affects your internet access, your speed, et cetera. That way, opening all different kinds of things can hinder your operation as well as infect you with viruses. It, it's just, and I go back to the cost, the installation of an antivirus, the cost is minimal and the time to do it, there's no reason that we should be paying an outsider. Every department could do their own. Well, it's, that's the it's reason very why simple. we have policies on cell phones, on social media, and on computers that they're not gonna be sitting out on a patrol car on the side of the road watching or playing music on there or downloading stuff right. they're not supposed to be doing because Shelby caught me the other day in a computer, in, a, in one of the vehicles that had a virus when I was there. Uh, I wear many hats in a day, but I'm very computer literate, so I was out there cleaning the computer, and he asked me why by spending my time to do it. Well, if you want to pay a computer guy to come over there and charge you $85 an hour, I can do that myself. And I do that on many occasions. I've done a lot of them in the last two years. And that's just me. I like getting things done. I like saving the taxpayers money. But to answer your question, some of those things could be prevented. And I do a lot of that work myself. Any other questions on the cell phones? Okay, the next one is auto liability, which is about uh, three quarters down the page. We recently, um, we have learned, I should say, that when you buy a Chevrolet Tahoe for a police vehicle and you have a $35,000 vehicle, that's only the wheels and the engine and the, the body compartment. When it's all said and done, you put about twenty to $25,000 worth of equipment in those vehicles. And this includes the radios, the radars, the petitions, the computers, and all of that stuff. And the county, I made a suggestion to LaWanna here several years ago when I came back, and I learned this through the hard way, 
through the state holding out vehicles all the time. If you turn over a Tahoe or if one of them overheats and it burns up completely to the ground, you're going to lose $20,000 worth of equipment. We've had two vehicles told here recently. Uh, we just had one the other day where one of our deputies got ran into in the back. He was parked turning left at an inter uh, at an intersection. The truck came up behind him, rear-ended him, and totaled the car out. And uh, luckily, a lot, not a lot of our equipment or any of the equipment was damaged in that one. The previous one that we had earlier this year, a deputy was going down the road chasing a violator and a 2,000 pound bull came out. And it came right to him, we have this on video, came right up to the center line, he took evasive action, did not hit the bull, but he turned over in the middle of the roadway four times. And he's currently out with a bummed up leg. He's been out for probably a year now, but we lost a vehicle there. The county did not have that equipment insured. So the county lost $20,000 right there in equipment because that vehicle was not insured. The insurance is gonna, is gonna pay the vehicle, but we're not gonna cover the insurance. None of the equipment. We lost the computers, everything in the car, the total loss. And that's just not acceptable in my book. So we talked about it. And for this in increase, in, we increased the number of vehicles by the type of equipment we have, and it's gonna be a $4,000 increase from last year's budget to do that. But uh, I'll tell you in the long run, folks, it's just cheap to insure it. That TAC, TAC provides a good insurance, and if you lose that amount of money, just have them reimburse it for it. We have a minimal deductible on that, and it's just, you know, the vehicle itself is a lot of money, but when you put all that stuff in there, it really adds up. We're talking about $50,000 plus per vehicle. So every one of those sheriff vehicles you see running down the road, there's $50,000 there. So it's 4,000 additional in year. Increase in order to the premium. To ensure. To ensure everybody. All that sure. Yes. Lana, when you said computers and stuff and then contents, the VMS vehicles insured that way? Yes. We have, TAC has changed the requirements as far as insuring equipment because the equipment has gotten so expensive years ago. It, you just give them a value of the vehicle once equipped and they would honor insurance claims on that, but now they want itemizations. They want you to have the invoices supporting the cost of that equipment. So our insurance files have become quite thick. Anyway, there's a $4,000 increase in the premium and the additional coverage that the county has asked for to cover these vehicles. So the next one is ammo, which, which is a minor item. Last year we had $1,500 in there because of the cost of ammo. Because of the additional people we added last year, I increased that by $1,000 to $2,500 because we went over in our budget just slightly this year right at it because of just the cost of keeping people. Um, the, the law requires that we have to keep them certified every year. Uh, we'll go down to vehicles. Last year, the Sheriff's Office had $111,060 in there for the vehicles that we bought last year, which was four Tahoe's. Currently, we have two totaled out vehicles, which is two wreck replacement vehicles that are damaged. The insurance paid the county for those vehicles, so we have two. So I'm asking, the, or the Sheriff's asking for two to replace the two wrecked ones. And then we're asking for one additional Tahoe to replace a Crown Victoria that has 158,000 miles on it. And then we have one truck, one of our pickups has 120,000 miles, and the transmission's bad in it. The transmission keeps jumping in and out and it has a major problem. It's going to cost about $5,000 to put a transmission in that truck. So I wanted to ask the court about that if y'all, I think it would be feasible to the county just to replace that truck. It's a, um, 2010 model it's five years old and it has 100 like I said 120,000 plus miles and it's got a bad transmission so um, I just feel like with the cost of it it would be better just to replace that vehicle instead of uh, spending five thousand dollars the last two patrol cars by the way that we have auctioned off we've got a hundred dollars for one I think 200 for the other so it just doesn't make any sense to put five thousand dollars in a vehicle that's not worth nothing if you go, if you take it to auction, you might get a thousand less or less. So that's why I'm asking for the two replacement vehicles, the one additional tile to replace the Crown Vic, and then the pickup. And basically, we had $111,000 in the budget last year for those four, and with the increase of vehicles this year, it goes to 136. So you're talking about about a $25,000 increase. Robert, 
where does the insurance money go? Doesn't that offset some of this cost? Yes, it, yes, sir. It goes to the general fund. Yes, it does. Yes, it will. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Yeah, we did. Uh, that money goes back to the general fund and it offsets these costs. Okay, so, so the net on the vehicles would be some substantially portion less than 136. ,000. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, I didn't. I didn't account for that. That's just the cost. But yeah, if you deduct the insurance money collected off both those total vehicles, yes, sir. Uh, another item, and I realize our long-suffering jail is not up and running, but I noticed that we have fifty thousand dollars for prisoner detention this year and I think that was the same as last year. I apologize, I skipped over that deal. Uh, there's a note off to the right. If you look at your note, it says juveniles, juveniles. there. Okay. Yes. Uh, the reason we did that, because currently we have, uh, as you know, we have an, an active murder case where we have two juveniles in custody, which could be a long-term deal. They've been in custody for 11 weeks now. And if we go out of this year into the new budget, in addition to the whatever's going to take us down the road, we're going to need money to house juveniles in Victoria and also in Jordanton. We use either one of those facilities. Um, the rest of the cost should be absorbed in our own jail. But we obviously can't house juveniles here. Yeah, you won't well, be able to house juveniles in the new jail either. No, sir. If we detain juveniles anywhere else, that's out of a different departmental budget. That's not out of the sheriff's department budget. Okay, so it does not come out of our Not if they're housed elsewhere. Okay, I was not aware of that. Yeah, that comes out of the judicial budget. There's a specific line item for juvenile detention. And then we could probably scratch that in or, or substantially reduce that line. And the one that, that includes medical bills and, and, and uh, Correct. everything else? Correct. If they are housed elsewhere, then it comes out of the judicial budget and there's a specific line item for juvenile detention. Okay. You know, I, I really... I don't know, I've said this last year and I'll say it again. I really think that in the sheriff's budget, you need to have a detention budget by itself and a... You mean a jail budget? A jail budget certainly could be in there. We're creating, you could have a new facility that's going to be under charted waters. We're going to have to know the total cost of how we're actually work, operating that jail. And it's going to skew your, your, your sheriff's patrol costs because it's going to... It's not going to give you a true picture of well, what you look at the bottom on. line, you're 100% right. You look at the bottom line of this budget and you look at the what it's going to cost to, to run that jail. Yes, I agree with you. I mean, just because you've got different, you'll have different, your salaries are going to be different from that and, and a lot of other things. That to me, you need to, they should be separated. Well, what we plan on doing, uh, to tell y'all is we're going to, so we're going to uncharted waters, we're going to be looking at the food cost, the electricity cost, all the utilities that go along with it. We're going to be looking at that the first year, month by month, that we're going to see exactly where we stand. So as I told you all, the sheriff told you in the last year's budget, we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants right now until we find out. We're hoping that we've got it covered, but um, again, we'll just have to play that by ear and see. Uh, I don't think we've built any extra padding in here. I think we've used a nominal fee. We've looked at the past cost, and then we based it on the number of inmates and the days per year, and I think we've got a very conservative budget when it comes to that jail. So again, that's y'all's call as far as the, if you want to leave that prisoner detention in there. I'm hoping that we don't need that, but unless you would want to reduce it to a lower rate. Well, you'll still have to house certain prisoners elsewhere. Uh, Will y'all be available for housing female detainees here? Pregnant female detainees? <laughs> That's not big too well, well, we have to because those only certain places accept those. The jail, right. the jail, yeah, the jail commission rules, we have one wing in the new jail that's going to hold 13 females. If we exceed that capacity, then we'd have to move the things around to make it work. It could work, but if not, we'd have to house them somewhere else. So if you have zero females, is that space occupiable for male detainees? Correct. Okay. Yes. So it's we not like we're going to be losing 13 beds if we don't have any yes, females. Yes, we also have GEO, too. We I can house females there. So whatever the overflows in there, we can take the GEO or vice versa. So, so technically, um, in the golden scheme of things, in the good picture, we shouldn't have any outside prisoner detention 
Yeah, unless if we, the juveniles don't come out of this budget, uh, that, can, that money can be given back to the county. Very minimal. Yeah, very minimal. I mean, I, I wouldn't say do it at zero, but I would put some nominal amount. Y'all have a suggestion in court? No. Well, my thing I was going to ask you next is what about your mental health inmates and your and the one that said you're you're you know you may have some that are going to require medical when you bring them in. I mean, are we going to? We have their way to deal. Deals. I mean, yeah. we have a medical. We have a medical deal a and a prison institution deal and a prisoner care. So we broke it down by category, but the, that actual line out of the commissioner knows he's talking about. That's just you know paying detention other where you know other places. How much uh, per day are we being charged, not a juvenile, but for adults? Right. 34, well, thir Atascosa charges us like 38, and uh, Live Oak County is 35, and Wilson is 36, I believe. I think what we had done budget-wise previously was a standard of 45 per day. Have, have y'all estimated what it's going to cost y'all per day to house in the country? As far as you're talking about the new jail now, yeah. as we don't know that, Commissioner, to be honest with you, we have looked at it, we looked at the food cost and everything else, we have not put a bottom line to it, no, sir. Do y'all plan to, maybe if you have, because we have jail beds, you overflow, have y'all considered allocating space to other counties to, to house somebody else's inmates at a certain cost? As far as with the rollover, like, the 30 beds of geo that's addressed. We haven't looked at it, but I mean, we discussed it, we kind of brought it up. So we plan on utilizing the 30 free beds here and then everybody else going to here. Yeah. And then if whatever's left, that will be something for future discussion, yes. And I know geo houses for Bear County, so I mean, if for some reason they need more room and we're not using that room, maybe we can. I don't see why they can't. Room, that, you know, give them some room, of, room for maybe. 100 days. And forty-five dollars is forty-five hundred dollars. It's talking in terms of this fifty thousand dollar budget. So, you know, if you put in ten thousand instead of fifty, that would give you two hundred prisoner days. That might be a little relief valve for you. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and make a line out of change. Ten thousand. Best line out of that. Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five Any other discussion on that? We had bought some replacement equipment last year, which included some rifles and shotguns and stuff. Uh, we had a ten thousand three hundred dollar budget last year. I reduced that to thirty eight hundred dollars because uh, under that weapons line item, because we have to buy some additional items for the new jail. It requires a gas gun and some additional items that we did not purchase for the opening of the jail this year. If we do have a, a problem in the jail and you'd have an inmate that would take somebody hostage or whatever, we have to buy a little equipment. So that's why I left that $3,800 in there. Um, on the air cards, I think uh, we briefly talked about that, but the air cards, uh, they're, they're just there's going to be a price increase that's going to go from $37.99 to $42. So that's what the difference is under the state contract. Uh, the other big, big ticket item that we're asking for is a currently in our computers, in our patrol vehicles, we have 31 computers. When they did the computer deal two and a half years ago, the particular laptop that they sold the county at that time before I came back here in computer terms was a 32-bit program. In order to do the videos, in order to do the things properly, it takes a minimum of 64 bits to run a computer to take video. Luckily, Cops Inc., they, they recognized that they made a mistake and they sold the county something they shouldn't have sold them. Uh, it came down to the fact that they've agreed to buy them back. They're going to buy those 24 back, but there's a difference in the additional software, the things that we want to, that we want to make this equipment right, and that's why I put that money at the bottom of that to upgrade 24 computers for the patrol cars and that's the reason for that. Um, currently we spend more time fixing computers and having problems than having cops in come down and work on for what it's worth. So that's why I'm asking to upgrade those uh, 24 computers. That What they're going to do is take the old computers back and they're going to furnish a brand new computer as a replacement and with all the proper equipment that's going to be used to run these videos. 
for the $20,000? I'm sorry? For the $20,000? Because your description indicates that 69235 is equipment from the wrecked car plus 20000 What exactly is the total that you're asking for for that line item? Is it the 89235? It's the 89235, and that includes the all the replacement costs and the replacement uh, for the, the op copsing for the two new vehicles, uh, and then to upgrade those other 24 computers. Because okay. obviously the, uh, the equipment is going to have to be replaced in the totaled out car. You know, car so there's two. There's two. Chief, yes. if they made a mistake on the 24 computers, are they giving us 100 percent back of the? They are not. No. No. What percentage are they giving? Herb and I have already talked about that, but it, after Herb looked at the contract and looked at the deal that the county signed before I came back here, there was nothing, it was not included in there. It was beyond the warrant, warranty period before they found that. So they graciously could have told us to buy, we're not paying nothing, but they graciously agreed to work with us and buy the old stuff back. So. Yeah, is that a substantial? Uh, that seems like a lot of money, but it'd be about two hundred thousand dollars to replace those twenty-four computers and all the stuff that goes with it. So they gave us a, a substantial reduction. I noticed in last year's budget as well as in this year, and I guess some of this money gets, uh, and I, I'm not being facetious, but lost in the system. But each year there's ten thousand in flash money. I think is what you term it. Uh, and I didn't look to see how your spending was coming out so far this year, but it's that pretty much a standard item. I, I understand what, I have a basic understanding of what you use it for if you're doing undercover work and this, that, and the other, but just tell me a little how it works, how that part of the program works. I realize in the grand scheme of things, it's not much money. Correct, Mr. Reynolds, that is just special assignments that we do uh, on a daily basis or weekly basis, uh, and we use that money towards that. And I'll, I'm the administrator of that money, and Mr. Reynolds, just to kind of clear the air, uh, because in that kind of sensitive type work, you can't actually put that money out there to, for the public to see that. Uh, I'm the administrator of that. When the auditor is going to come in, they come and audit my books. So if, I, if any money is used for those type of operations, the money is issued. I, issue it to the individual to make sure that it's you know double signed that all the things are done properly and so i'm the administrator of that of those two accounts and then uh, since the auditor is not objecting i'm assuming everything is correct that is correct we have discussed this in very detailed conversations robert you want to address that there's two extra people Yes, uh, yes, for the jail, and, and the jail inspector was here two weeks ago and took a walkthrough through the jail and looking at the progress and all that. Right now, we currently have 10 jailers on staff, and uh, it's going to require four shifts of three jailers. And the reason the jail commission is going to say that rule is because you have central control in this jail. What that basically means that you have to have one jailer in this pod that's going to control everything, the locks, the doors, cameras, and all. Then that leaves two on the floor. If you have a suicide watch, if somebody's under suicide watch, or if the nurse deems that somebody has to go to Otto Kaiser or to another medical facility and that jailer has to go with them, that only leaves one on the floor. Currently, the jail commission rules say you have to have one jailer per 48 inmates jail, whether, you're, whether it's at capacity or not. You have to have one jailer. So in order for it to, me to make this work, is we're going to have to have 12 jailers on staff for four shifts. And that's the way it's going to be. And that will also cover sick time, vacation time, or whatever. So after we met with him and looked at the numbers, we realized we're two jailers short to make this work in order to meet the minimum standards. You know, we at some point, it may require additional people once we get in there and the sheriff determines if he needs them. The, the problem that we're having also is as far as when we deal with a prisoner that's in custody and we have to call community out, MHM Maryland, a lot of the times they're putting them on suicide watch, okay? Some of them require constant supervision, so the jailer actually has to sit there 24-7 and watch the, the offender. We do have 
uh, two uh, dorms that we can watch them, but if we are, we're up to three or four, then that's going to take another uh, jailer to watch the other two. And I'm going to be honest with you, lately we have been having a lot of offenders in custody that they're under uh, MHMR. Uh, we have to call them and we take them to the hospital and we have to put them under observation a long period of time. So you lose the jailer? So you lose the jailer, yes, That's correct. That's you have to come into three? Correct. Uh, correct. You they have to actually physically document for the jail so commission every, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, every 15, 30 minutes. Yes, some are 15 minutes. Some are 15 minutes too. And so that's the reason why we're asking, not that we need them, it's going to be required. I mean, it's going to be something that we, not that we want them, it's so that we need them or they're required in order to meet the minimum standards. Once they come down here, whenever this thing is done, uh, they're going to want to see that. And that's why we're asking the court to give us that. We could probably use deputies or whatever we have to for the time being if that jail open between now and this budget item. We actually need them right now, to be honest with you. But I know it's not in the current budget, so. We'll try to make do what we can until October, until the new money starts. And then right now we're also using a restraint chair that we have, and we can also place them there they need to be, and we can roll them next to you. We have another one that's in custody, and put them next to them. That's how we're covering. This 32,512.23, you use the midpoint on that one? Um, of the salary survey last year? I think I went back to the starting pay after talking to Luana. You went to the check that Luana went to the minimum. Yes, to the yes to the yeah. beginning salary. Okay. No, I take it back. I, I am not. I'm not correct on that. If 32 is the midpoint. 32, whatever. I think 31 something is the beginning. So okay. that is my mistake. Then I'm sorry because it is. Uh, when after I talked to Luana, she said no. That anybody hired after October 1 would have to go back to the starting pay. Because we're still working on that right here, so that may that may vary there. Okay, so I, I apologize for that, James. That 32, whatever it is, is the starting pay currently for James. Okay. I think that's all we have as far as changes. And that's, there was one other item. Let me bring to your attention that uh, uh, since we since the new radio tower was built there and. The fencing currently for the jail, I, we put in, I think, in there that one line item. You may have seen a note in there about a fence and about a canopy. canopy. Judge Long and I had discussed during our visit with the sheriff that uh, Holt Caterpillar had recommended that we just buy, build a nominal cover over that generator over there to make sure that, you know, that it's protected from the weather and all that other stuff. So that's why I put that in there along with that fence. If the fence does not cover the entire tower area because the tower has steps that goes all the way to the ground it's a liability for the county if a child would get there and crawl that tower 300 foot tower and something would happen to them the county's going to be liable so uh, uh, so I canopy fence tower and miscellaneous is support for the twenty five thousand dollars that you show there uh, yeah i think so yes uh, <laughs> It's on your second, second page. page. Second page. Like line seven. Six. It's different on ours here. We have an old deal, but let me just all the equipment from you, Joe? Yes. yes. Okay. Counting the generator, bank tower, or something. Yes. After we went down there and looked at the completion of that, we didn't realize that that tower has stepladder steps all the way to the ground. <laughs> And that's a big liability dangerous. So it has to be enclosed in. So you don't want the Carter City High School flag flying. Camera. Absolutely. <laughs> or some graffiti on top of it or something. So uh, that's the reason we that's and that's all we have. That's all the changes we've had. So <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry? Where are you relative to this year's budget? We are in very good shape on this year's budget because uh, obviously the jail hasn't been open. We didn't use a, only one quarter of the food cost, but we budgeted $260,000 in food cost to run that jail. So we, because we house for free at GEO and whatever food cost the people we have housing here, so we went only, only over on two items and, and one was the auto liability. 
and one was the other uh, our, our minimum cost, but we're in very good shape on our budget. What is your bottom line number for uh, the next budget cycle? Uh, a lot of, did you put that? I did not calculate this. No, I'm sorry uh, to answer your question. I didn't put a total figure. I, I think it should, be, it should be substantially less than what it is now. Because, yes. If it's what I've got on here, it would be, uh, let's see, yeah. about. Uh, if you're looking at a computer generated total, that wouldn't be right. Okay. Pardon. Yeah, I was looking at the $4 million last year, but. but uh, we cut out a bunch of stuff out of there from that we had last year, but... Okay, so it's a mess. Yes, ma'am, it's going to be a mess. Do so, Robert... any idea where we're going to be in? I mean, we've never gotten only an update. Lorraine was here the other day and didn't say a word. But when we're going to be able to get into the jail? The last date they gave it was uh, July 31st. Uh, she gave, said 45 days. She said that they had a good meeting the other day. And they're going to double their crews. Uh, right now, just to update y'all a little bit, they're laying the tile. They have some touch-up work. Uh, the office furniture and everything is there. The only thing that's waiting to be completed is the floor tile, some of the ceiling tile, and finish the courtroom. It looks like the jail itself is done. Uh, they're just doing the cosmetic stuff, and so, and then they have obviously the landscaping, and I think some metal that needs to go above the windows. But she thinks she thinks they can get it done in 45 days. Then we built in a 30-day window, as I previously announced, to move everything. So we're hoping. We're hoping in September 1 we be up and running. That's what we're, that's what we're shooting for. So. Robert, I have a lot. I'm sorry, Miss Iris, go ahead. Oh, oh I'm just want, they, Y'all had said something about some, being able to train over there. Uh, have y'all started training over there yet, or have you had that chance? We can't occupy the building, Miss Iris, the, the, until we get what they call substantial completion of the building. Oh, okay. They don't allow us in there because okay. it's a hard hat area. We can't do anything there okay. until they finish working. Because some of these employees that will be in the new jail have already been hired and are on payroll right now, there's a lot of questions being asked as to what they're doing since they're already being paid. I mean, we obviously don't have anywhere for jail cooks to be cooking. Uh, we don't have any reception area for a receptionist to be receiving. So what are these? The receptionist is, if you walk in her office, she sits there in the front with the other two clerks and she also is training. Uh, they're showing her as far as the phone system, the file system, and stuff like that. They're, they're doing the uh, the dietitian cook and her assistants are working on menus, and also we have met with uh, the bat food service and working on uh, the amount the foods that we order and make sure that we stay under our budget. That's what they've been working on. Also training on jail commission rules. Okay. The rules require that the dietitian and the a cook meets certain guidelines, so they're doing all of those. Plus, we had to work with another nutritionist, which we had the state uh, graciously providing one free to the county that's working with those two ladies because not only do you have to have dietary requirements, you have to have nutritionary requirements for inmates. So we have a, a nutritionist that's been coming down working with those ladies. So the old time bologna sandwich doesn't fly anymore? No. no. And then we also, the, the, the nurse also had to come up with some jail plans as far as uh, in medical, how the offenders are screened and TB tested. Uh, protocols. The protocol she also has to come up with plans oh. that, that we have to provide to jail. There's just been a lot of questions out there, and I figured now yeah. would be a good time to address them. Well, uh, I'm not the contractor, so you know, <laughs> you know, I'm not doing the jail, so but you know, just gotta wait. Obviously, if there have been questions about them sitting around in the hall and some other places, we have them on the computer doing what they're supposed to be doing. So they're not freeloading, just put it that way. Uh, so we're trying to get them up to speed so when we get to that point, they can go down there. Also, uh, we have taken them to the jail multiple times because the jail was not set up as an infirmary as far as the actual jail contracts. There has to be a bed added, there has to be curtains for you know, to examine an inmate, things like that. So the nurse has been doing her part. We've had the two cooks over there in the kitchen going training on that equipment, seeing what all is there. So there's a lot of things behind the scenes that are going on in preparation of getting it over there. So once we walk into the door, we'll be ready to go. What you're saying is a delay might be a uh, hidden blessing. I'm sorry? Yes, I say what you're saying is a delay may have been a <coughs> hidden blessing and the opportunity to get more nearly up to speed than to have to walk in and go to a full run. 
Well, the jail commissioner or jail commission inspector, when he comes uh, to turn that over to the county, he's going to ask for those items. And that's why we brought these people on board saying, first thing he's going to say is, where is your diet, your, your menus at? And I need the nutritional requirements that was assigned off by the nutrition, all of those requirements. So we did a little, the sheriff did a little pre-planning and put all this in, in place before we get there. Because they're going to, they won't issue an occupancy certificate for that jail, and that's all those requirements are met. So hopefully we'll be able to occupy in less than normal days after yes. receiving substantial completion. Yes. I didn't see DPS listed on these units anywhere to discuss. Are we going to get the DMV office by any chance for, for a renewal of drugs license for the citizens of the area? Are, they, are you planning on opening another office? Or the DPS is not on your budget here, and they do have a, a budget page. They always have in the past. They have not requested any differences. Therefore, there's not a presentation to be made. Uh, there is the opportunity to have driver's license renewals through another office in the county, just renewals. And the conversation has been to do that through the elections office since a photo ID is also required for elections, etc. Uh, that hasn't fully come down the pike yet. No testing, just renewals. Right. They've been going through some changes also. They are getting a new sergeant that will start here on the 1st of of this of July, so I think there's some things that haven't been decided yet as far as that goes. And they also got an additional uh, uh, license and weight trooper assigned in this county. Also, there'll be two announced. So I think there's some changes in the, in the way they're in the way. But those th changes won't be funded by county dollars. They are not That's requesting correct. for any change in their county. That is correct. Okay. I was just uh, to answer a part of Ms. Hall's question um, I just want to make sure that that everybody understands it's not really that in the counties um, we don't get the choice whether we want a DMV office or not we have expressed on a number of occasions I know I believe you called uh, I don't know if you've called Judge Long but I believe it was uh, Judge Butler that had called and maybe some of the others I don't know but I also have called when we came out with voter ID I was asking and and that is uh, Texas Department of Public Safety has just decided that they're not opening up any offices and that's the answer I get every time so that's uh, higher up so you know like when you talk to legislators and things like that that's something if uh, if our county really does want it and I see an, a definite need for for that here um, there right now their response is that it's close enough in Floresville and Beeville and they don't see a need for that but Lawan is right in the fact that they have passed some legislation that may allow us to do some uh, some renewals but those would be renewals only not you know not the new licenses or anything like that so I just wanted to make sure that that they know that has been addressed we've talked about it a number of times but it's not up to the county it's up to DPS definitely a need for one. We get a lot of inquiries to our office about our office license, so there's definitely a need for one. Thank you all. Thank you very much. But before we close, our, I think we're almost close, I don't want to rush things. We can't close without the judge saying so. But I read something in the PAC uh, deal the other day about uh, something the legislature came up with, and I, I understood it, but I didn't understand it. Do y'all know are we supposed to start filming and making commissioner's court sessions available on the web as a county uh, requirement? I, I, that was the impression I got out of Shelby. I think it's a population of over 100,000. Oh, okay. But it's mandated. Okay. It didn't, what I read did not give a, a barrier on the thing, and I just wondered if we were going to have to wind up doing it. I mean, I know Joe does it most of the time as a community service for his newspaper, but I, I was hoping we weren't going to get saddled with that from what you're saying, obviously. We're lucky we have to. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's all I have. Thank you. Anything uh, James is 
given everybody a copy of his uh, proposed Things that we're talking about. Yeah, if you want to. Uh, Orange County salaries, I know the salary survey. The salary survey, we did a survey on there and we did uh, minimum, a mid, medium, or you know, whichever way, or a max. This is just my proposal on this, and everybody's going to have their opinion on it, everything, but. I say that new hires should go to the minimum and from minimum to medium or midpoint you go at 5%, 5%, 5% and when you do a three years completion of that then you go to the midpoint and after the midpoint you go as the salary survey stated 3%, 3% for five years. Once the five years are completed you get to the max. That would be for the new hires. Now there's new hire. that's from medium from midpoint to max is going to be pertaining to all the present employees and to new hires with seven years and experience and up. The only way that you could get to a midpoint or a medium will not be, it would be proof that the employee, the new employee that's put up the application has up to seven years experience and up. If you have one year experience, but it has to be in the same field, not can't just have experience in working. It has to be in the same field, whatever you're putting your application for. If you got one year, you go up. No experience would be the the minimum. One year would be five percent past whatever the minimum range is. Three years experience would be five more percent past that range. Five years would be an additional five percent. You'd be fifteen percent over the minimum if you had five years experience. Uh, ten percent three years five percent one year no experience you'd be at start the minimum if you have seven years experience and up you'd start at the midpoint it's really simple I used the uh, I used ten dollars to start off with uh, one year would be ten fifty uh, three years would be eleven five years would be eleven fifty and then your midpoint would be twelve dollars after that would be three percent would be twelve thirty six and 1272, 1308, 1344, 1380 till you get to the five year completion. Then you'd go to the max of $14.16. Of course, I didn't pick anybody's anybody's salaries out, anybody's hourly wage. I just uh, chose a round number, $10. Like I said, it can, it can be changed around if y'all wanna do the three years the, in increments of one, two, three, rather than one, three, five years. I just put one, three, five, and seven years to see if we could attract employees with more experience and get the job done quicker. I was busy with the one yesterday for about, I guess, for two and a half hours, and we looked at the salary survey, and we discussed um, taking the midpoint and moving it to the minimum because the sheriff's office if you go to the current midpoint, I don't think you're going to find anybody that's, let's say, at 36,000 that will come to work for Cornish County because right now, the I think Wilson County is at 40, and Atascosa is probably around 40 also, 41, 43. So it's, it's the, the whole, when we did the salary survey, and my whole thing was that about the salary survey was, was try to set up a, like you did here, a, a, a standard way of, of making sure people progressed in, 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 in a salary if, if, if it was available. But we talked about moving the midpoint again to the minimum would be the starting salary and the current ones that are in the midpoint now, if the court decided to do it, nothing has been discussed, but if we follow the pay plan, which was 3% per year, which means mean it would be five years between 3% and, uh, and the midpoint. So, and that was, some of them right now, to me and my, my interpretation, we are occurring in our second year of, of, the, of the salary survey if you did at the midpoint. I mean, at the minimum from where everybody's at with 3%. But, and then it would take five years for anybody to get to the midpoint and then if you got if you got a uh, promotion, like if you took a different range of pay, you'd have to go back to the minimum to start with. You know, 
of, of your of your pay and at another level. Say, if you was a level one person in some field and you went to level two, or you you started the level two midpoint minimum <coughs> minimum whatever that would be, and uh, and then we could continue on the rest of the way that the salary survey goes. Uh, it'd be and then we talked about after five years if we decide to do longevity give somebody like ten dollars or twenty dollars a, a year for every year of service after five years but they'd have to complete <coughs> that fifth year in december then they would you know it would also give a little bit of a retention a, a, yeah retention plan to do that and uh it was just something that we worked on for a long time. Lauren, you anything you want to say about that? Or? Not at this point. I'd rather have the numbers before we really discuss yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, James's figures are very well done. Um, and what I'd like to take a look at is uh, getting out to the maximum end. He started with 10 on the bottom end and worked upward. I'd like to take what we want to be at for a given position at maximum, <coughs> work backward, use the same figures, you can do it. Just work backward and we'll wind up with a little a little higher starting right. than ten dollars, but that would uh, it was just a long Yeah, but this the, 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 the layout you have is excellent. I think that I think it's well taken and well done and it uh, it gives them something additional during the years that they start and are at a lower salary, their percentages increases and then as they begin to max out years wise the, the percentage increases a shrink a bit but I think it's a great idea I just and I'm I'm always on the cheap obviously or most of the time but I, I think that, that probably when we get to these long-term employees who are valuable we need to reward them perhaps some of this longevity pay as long as it doesn't get too much where we get somebody who's dead wood in there and can't get rid of them, and, you know, because they've been here 20 years, but anyway. I think you also bring up a good point, Mr. Reynolds, relative to speaking about the dead wood. You know, you've got to have performance in there for this. This cannot be an automatic. Just because you're in a job for five years, you've worked up to where you get, you know, automatic 3% of 5%. So again, a performance plan has to be in place for all departments in administering this process if it is agreed to. I think the question I had for Shelby on changing the midpoint to minimum, was that strictly for that for that type of job? Or are you talking about all the oh that'd be the, the mid the current midpoint would be the new minimum. Because the commissioner's court last year at budget time adopted to move everyone right. to the midpoint. So what his suggestion is that the mid is now the new minimum and then we will calculate out a new max yeah. based on the 15 percent. Several people last year got substantial licenses that had only been here for a year or so, you know, by, by making that adaption from the minimum to the median. So what happens then when you have a new employee? That employee is going to start at that minimum? Mm -hmm. At the new minimum, right. which is currently the mid. Right. right. Yeah, it may be, that may be an issue. There is no minimum. Yeah. It's median. Right. It's really just, just forget saying minimum. It's You're right. starting at minimum. Well, but so then, then where's the max? There's going to be two, but then we're going to calculate a new max. That's what I'm saying. So then yeah. where's the max? Yeah, it's going to work out. Exactly. None of this has been decided. It's no, that's right. Right. I understand. Like no, we're just talking about well, possibilities. Well, I understand what you're yeah. saying, but you don't go out of here and be saying that's what no, they right. did, and no, that's no. not what's happening. No, this is just and a thought. It, it may or may not happen. That's correct. Right. I'm just asking for, you know, what is something. There, there's nothing anywhere that says we have to raise salaries right. any amount for right. a particular year. Exactly. Well, and Mary, the, the challenge comes in, too, because when the commissioner's court sets a budget and sets salaries, they have always adopted by position. And so it has to somehow, if they go with this salary survey, that they're going to have to have the assurances from the officials or department heads that if you hire somebody and they are green, that they start at the minimum rate wage. Just because 35 is budgeted doesn't mean that's what gets paid out. Would you 
you mind if I point out just one more thing? I also want to remind you that we paid for another salary survey, and I don't want to be shot. But it did have some merit to it in that the individual that did do that survey, he did have county experience. He had worked with counties. And I don't know if anybody has looked at it again with a more open mind than what we had when it first came in. I think the issues were more with his recommendations as to where individuals should start within his ladder than they were with what his ladder was necessarily. So um, I don't know if the new ones, especially you, Judge, and Mr. Reynolds have seen that old one, but there is some merit to that old one in that he had experience with the, with the, the place within the county that each position holds. I also want to add to that, although <coughs> Dr. Worling did do the initial survey, CK and HR also interviewed several surrounding counties to see what their pays were for the different levels. So county government was taken into consideration in this second survey also. Didn't they interview some private sector too? Correct. As did Dr. Worthing. Yes. yes. Dr. Worthing was the first one, right? Yes. Correct. He was the first one. He never even called me. Right. There's lots of problems. Yeah, he never. That's the reason I didn't agree with it because he never contacted me about anything. Thing I liked about, one thing I liked about his survey was that he had the public come in and look at for the elected officials and they, they kind of discussed what the elected officials should, should get. They had a, he had, they had formed a committee of some sort. Actually, I believe those were just discussing the employees, not actually the officials. I think he did the officials too. Well, I mentioned that to him and he said he didn't. We don't know what he did. Well, after he presented the survey, I was not here. Right. Today. Several questions were asked, and part of them were answered, and the majority of them were not. And he reflected that they could not get accurate information to thoroughly assess everything, so he just kind of threw up his hands and said, that's what I present, and that's what you get. Anything further? No, sir. Not for me. I'll declare this meeting adjourned. We, no, I don't think we just quit. Thank y'all for coming.